What's really <laughs> interesting to me is like your background, I believe, unless Wikipedia is incorrect, it says economics and a minor in visual arts and psychology. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I graduated with a degree in economics and a minor in psychology and another minor in visual arts. I, I really liked both of those topics and didn't want to give them up. So, uh, which is, is funny because, you know, if you, if you talk to me then, I never would have known I was going to be making video games. And all of those have really come into play a lot. You really? know, the, the psychology comes into game design. The visual arts has let me art direct stuff. Um, you know, and, and, and that's how I grew up. I grew up uh, in this business. You know, it, I, I got into the, the first job that I had in this business was at a folding table answering, doing customer support. And that was customer support back when customer support was the only way you could order a game, right? <laughs> right. That was pre that was pre internet days. So we were taking we were taking credit card orders, putting boxes in boxes and shipping. Wow. Right, we were putting product in boxes and shipping them. And um, you know, and I, I said to my boss, "Look, uh, you know, I know a little bit about games, and I, and I play Dungeons and Dragons, and I play all these board games, and." You know, uh, what if I, you're, you're understaffed. What if I clock out? Cause I was an hourly worker at the time. What if I clock out and, um, you know, after, after my eight hours, I'll clock out and I'll, and I'll work for free for you. And I'll, I'll work on these games. If you teach me, you know, if you guys show me how to do this stuff, I'll, I'll do it. And I designed my first game siege from my customer support desk. That's crazy. And after, and yeah. And after that, um, they said, well, we don't understand why we're paying you to answer phones. So <laughs> right. I got, I got promoted it to design. And then I kind of same, same kind of battlefield promotion stuff. I noticed that there weren't any, there wasn't anybody maintaining a schedule and or a list of deliverables for the products we were working on. So I created the notion of a spreadsheet and the notion of a timeline and the notion of having estimates on our, on our assets that we are delivering, you know, and all that. And so I kind of self-taught, myself or I kind of self-taught the the production role to myself and then I was ready you know to go to Westwood. D did you learn coding while you were switching in from from that position or how, how did that work? I and yeah I'm really curious how does one make that jump because today that seems almost impossible right? Yeah uh, so so irony was that I, I entered into college with a computer engineering uh, major and I was accepted under that as my major. And I got to college and I hated coding. Right. And and I hated it for a couple of reasons. The main reason was they weren't teaching me the coding that I was seeing in the games. Right. They were teaching me all these old languages that no one was using anymore because the teachers hadn't, you know, done any real coding since that time. Right. So um, I really had a, just a bad experience there and, and ended up with the, the economics and the psych and the VA uh, degree. But uh, so I never learned coding. And um, if you're asking me, how did I become, I, I'm not sure what the question was. How did I become a designer? How did I become yeah, a producer? Yeah, by yes, both. How did you transition from a seemingly, you know, like what a sales position I would call it to 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 being more hands-on and becoming like creative director and all that's and creative. You know, yeah. Creative. So, so, so like, like I had, like I said before, and you know, I, okay. So I'll go, I'll go more granularly through the, through the process. Yeah. So what happened was, so I was there, you know, and I'm answering phones, but when you're answering phones and helping people through the product and et cetera, et cetera, it's like being a fireman, right? You're, you're only working when the phone rings. And so there was a lot of downtime. And I was like, hey, you know, the first thing I said to the boss was I said, hey, I got a lot of downtime. Right now, I'm just reading your wife's Vogue magazines. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what if I wrote the game manuals for some of the games you're working on? And it's like, if you don't like it, just throw it away. But you're paying me for that time either way. Right. So wouldn't you rather have me doing something that could potentially, do, you know, uh, uh, work for the game instead of just wasting time? So what boss is going to say no to that? Sure, of course. So I, I wrote I wrote like two game manuals um, from from my customer support desk during and and often I stayed after hours. I would clock out at my eight and I would stay after to, to keep working on it. And after I was done with that, I, I went to him again and I said, look, I don't have any more manuals to write. Um, if you teach me how to build levels in this game, I'll do that for you under the same deal. Right. And and I, I get that the timeline is more compressed. So I'll guarantee you that I'll be here 10 hours a day at least. And I'll only charge you for eight. 
Wow. So it was basically giving him a bunch of free work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what boss isn't going to, sure. you know, what boss isn't going to take that? And so that's what I did. I, 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 that's how I ended up designing siege from my customer support desk was every time when there was downtime, I started building levels. I started creating the story for those levels. I started creating the, you know, the, the, basically I designed all the missions for the product. And, uh, and then at the end of that, you know, he was smart enough to say, I don't know why I'm paying you to answer phones. <laughs> right. I want you to do that. I want you to do that full time. And that's what I, I started doing. I think it's such an incredible story. That's kind of why I needed almost like a second slowed ver- version of it because it seems so sure. unattainable almost today. Well, I mean, yeah, certain amounts of, you know, effort and showing up and being there probably can get you pretty far. But I don't know if I could get you a transition into a, a now a position probably would be, you know, four year degree computer science or maybe not computer science, but you know, some sort of background in design, surely, right? 